Having a waiver and doing a consultation with all clients is a huge part of us as lash artists. It's important that you're managing expectations, but you're also protecting your side of the business as well. In today's video, you're gonna be watching Ashlyn go over our waiver and also consultation questions for each client. Hey guys, this is Shauna Jones, the CEO and founder of Live Bay Lash here in Las Vegas. This channel is dedicated to everything lashes and beauty, so if you haven't yet already, go ahead and hit the subscription button below. Hey guys, my name's Ashlyn. I'm here at Live Bay Lash in Las Vegas, Nevada as a lash artist. And today we're gonna be covering um, one of the most important steps in a lashing process, if not the most important step, um, which is your consultation. So you can be the best lash artist on the block. You can um, have super clean work and have every lash lashed, but if you're not fully um, explaining and, and having a, a good consultation with your client, your client's not gonna walk out happy. So we're gonna go over um, what to, to go over, what questions to ask, topics to cover, um, whether it be a full set with a new client or maybe with a client that you have every week that you've had for years, um, and the reasons why having a consultation is so important. So before even starting on your client, it is really important that you have a consent form for your client. Um, it's a protection for not only you, but for your client. If anything were to go wrong, you know that you have it here on paper. Um, but I know sometimes it can be hard to make your own um, waiver. So we do have a link down below that you can make uh, and download and customize to yourself. So we have one here on our iPads. You can have them printed out, um, but make sure you do have that for each and every client. Once that's out of the way, uh, it is important to now ask if they have any sensitivities or allergies, um, and that might determine if you need to use a certain glue. Here at Live Bay Lash, we do have a, a sensitive glue. It's a clear glue that you're more than welcome to purchase through our link. And if not, we do have other glues that would suit their needs. Another thing that you would want to be aware of is any previous conditions that they have that would maybe inhibit you to actually work on them. Um, get familiar with different diseases um, or different conditions that people can have that you might want to tell them it not, it's not a good time to uh, be lashing. Another thing that you would want to be aware of is any skin conditions or diseases that might, may occur um, on clients. So be familiar with these things. You may want to tell the client to come back at another time if they are having a certain issue. Now, once these things are out of the way, you can go ahead and start your consultation. Um, I know if someone's coming in for a full set, uh, you might want to start out asking if they've ever had lashes before. Is this their first time? Um, and if that's the case, you do want to prepare them for what they are going to see. Um, one thing that I do ask is if they have a certain makeup routine. Do they usually wear a lot of makeup um, or do they usually go a little bit more natural? That'll help you to kind of gauge what type of set is best suited for them. Um, one of my favorite things that I'll ask them is if they've ever used strip lashes. And if so, lots of times they'll have an idea of what they want. So there's times um, people will tell me, I get strip lashes and I love the wispy look, or I get strip lashes that make me have more of a cat eye. And that gives you an idea of where you can start. Um, but the whole process of, of this is to get where they are coming from. Why are they here? Why did they book the set that they, that they booked? Um, and this gives you a better opportunity to um, gauge what they want. Now after this, this is your chance to show your knowledge as a lash artist. So usually I'll have them lay in my chair, I'll go ahead and look at their lashes, um, and that's your responsibility to tell them what you think. Um, lots of times they're not sure what they want, but you as a lash artist knows exactly how lashes fall on certain people, you know how um, eye shapes look with certain styles, so it's your responsibility to tell them these things. I noticed that honesty is the best policy, so if you don't think that the style they're coming in for is best suited for their eye, let them know. So usually I'll look and the first thing that I'll, I'll notice um, is how many lashes they have. Maybe they're coming in for a classic set of lashes, but if I notice their lashes are a little bit more sparse, I might suggest a different set. I might tell them, um, you might want to try a mixed set, you'll still get that very natural look that a classic set will give you. Um, but for your lashes, I think a mixed set might fill out your eye a little bit more. Or you might tell them you have a lot of lashes, this classic set will, will be great on you. So once you establish a certain style, um, you can go on to the next step. Uh, and that would be maybe even talking about curl um, and lengths of the lashes. A huge tip that I was told was to show them pictures. So it's nice to have either on your iPad or a phone or even have pictures in your room of work that you've done. 
So you can show them this is exactly what a cat eye would look like, what um, a C curl looks like versus a D curl. That way they're able to see visually what things will be. Um, now looking at their lashes, lots of times you can determine how long their lash should be. So they might come in, they want these long dramatic lashes. But take note of how long their natural lash is. You might want to tell them, I notice that your natural lash is a little bit shorter, so you might want to tone down that length a little bit. I think you're going to have a better retention with that. They're going to fall a little bit better. Um, and that's what your lash can carry. And then I'll also explain the difference between um, having a more relaxed curl versus a, um, a more dramatic curl. What look are they going for? So the biggest thing is having good communication because you're managing expectations. So make sure that you guys are both on the same page before you even start lashing. The next thing that you want to make sure to do is always have a thorough consultation, even with clients that you have on a weekly basis. There's people that you may have seen for years and you just assume that you know what they want, um, but that's not always the case. So before you start lashing them, um, always reassure them. So it looks like last time we did a cat eye on you with this curl. How's that been working for you? How's the length been? Um, and see what they say. They might want to change things up a little bit. Sometimes you think you know what you did on them last time and you'll just start. And then you finish and you realize that's not what you did. So it's good to verbalize that before you start. That way um, you ensure that they're going to be happy walking out. Another thing that I notice with a lot of fills is the first thing that people lose is usually their outer corners. So if you're looking at them and you just assume, okay, I do most of the length in the middle, and you go ahead and lash and start doing that, it might not be the style that they're looking for. Um, you might want to ask them, is that where you usually put most of your length or do you like the length on the ends? Lots of times they might tell you they like the length on the ends, but it fell out. So you would have never known that if you never asked them. Um, so keep asking questions. You might even feel like you're being repetitive but it's okay, I'd rather be repetitive um, and ensure that you're doing the right set than for them to walk out unhappy. One thing that I do like to do is suggest a couple options. Lots of times people are very overwhelmed with all the different styles. There might be um, an open eye, a doll eye, cat eye, rainbow, and, and lots of times they don't know the difference of each. Um, so go ahead and look at their lashes and suggest a few things that you think would be best for their eye shape. That helps to eliminate um, their own anxiety. They don't really know what they want, but you giving your own professional opinion will help them to trust you a little bit more. Um, and then that is also based of, of what you professionally think from their eye shape. So remember that you're the professional um, and that they're trusting you with their eyes. So build that trust and communication. A last thing that you do want to cover with your consultation is if they're coming in for a fill, how long was their retention? They may, um, they might explain that they realized their lashes were falling out a little bit sooner than they expected. Um, and if that's the case, maybe reevaluate what type of set they're doing. Maybe their lashes are too long for what their natural lash can hold. Um, maybe the curl is getting in the way of how their eye shape is. So make sure to ask certain questions um, and they might not even think to bring up initially. So that way they can um, have the best retention possible uh, with the best set for their eye. If during your consultation your client does mention that they have sensitivities to saline um, or any certain tapes, we do have a link below that um, gives you a little bit different alternatives. We have a lash primer that is geared towards um, sensitive eyes. Again, we have the, the clear glue that's geared, geared towards sensitive eyes with the glue. Um, and same with iPads. So ask these things uh, to make sure that you are using the right products on your client. Out of all my clients, I definitely do have a handful that are sensitive towards certain products. So it's nice that I have that already in my kit ready to go if these clients do come in. So the biggest thing is to build that trust and to make sure you're educating your clients. Um, once you do that, they're going to want to come back to you because they trust you, they trust your judgment, you guys have already built that foundation together. Um, so make sure you do ask the right questions. Again, it is important to have even a waiver that you can look at and do check marks off of. So go ahead and check out this waiver and the products that were mentioned in the link below and hopefully this will help you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you got value, go ahead and hit the like button. Question for you is do you currently use a waiver? Go ahead and comment below. Tap the screen for the next video.